Good to know you're still with us. Today in history, the first Christmas light was put on um, by President Calvin College um, in 1923 that's on this day president calvin college of the united states touches a button and lights up the first national uh, christmas tree to grace the white house grounds um, not only was it the first white house community christmas tree but it was the first to be decorated with electric lights electric lights basically um, and then several music groups performed at the tree lighting ceremony, including the Epiphany Church Choir and the U.S. Marine Band. Uh, let's uh, take a detour here and talk about uh, the first uh, indoor Christmas tree. According to the White House uh, Historical Association, President Benjamin Harrison was the first president to set up an indoor Christmas tree for his family and visitors to enjoy as way back as 1889. It was decorated with ornaments and candles. And in 1929, First Lady Leo Henry Hoover oversaw what would become an annual tradition of decorating the in -house, indoor White House tree. Since then, every First Lady's duty included trimming the White House tree. Let's go back to um, college now. Uh, the inauguration today was the inauguration of the first outdoor national Christmas tree, and it initiated a tradition that has been repeated for every administration since then. That's uh, basically what happens today, uh, December 24 in 1923. Let's uh, see yeah. how that has replicated across the world. We know it's a big deal. I uh, witnessed the one in Edo State. Um, I witnessed the one in um, Aquaibum. No, not Edo, I beg your pardon. Aquaibum, yes, mm -hmm. the lighting of Christmas oh, okay. trees. I didn't know, I didn't um, know it was... We was also know that issue. Anambra has a case of... Um, they just did it. I saw a news story about them lighting up Christmas tree in, um, I think it's, um, what's the name of this, their major city again? I've forgotten. Oka. Anamba. No, no, not Oka. I think somewhere else. They, they lighted the trees there. It's now a tradition across the world. Uh, we see big ceremonies of people lighting up the Christmas tree and making, it's part of the fun of Christmas. Yeah, yeah and, and um, yes, you know, it's a reminder to, you know, everyone. I think... Uh, we all also, you know, should try and get a small tree, even if a tiny one, um, and make your Christmas a little bit more special. You know? I don't have a single <laughs> thing in be, my... Uh, it's just me that's seen it now. Why should I put plenty? <laughs> just come and see that. Say, oh, get Christmas. yourself a Christmas But if you can, get yourself a Christmas tree. <laughs> it's nice. It uh, amplifies the ambience uh, in the environment and just gives you this happy feeling. So that's today, uh, we needed to just mention the fact that uh, in the U.S. in 1923, uh, President Calvin touches a button and lights up the first national Christmas tree outside. Uh, I guess we'll get to hear the day that that turkey, setting the turkey free for Thanksgiving issues oh, yeah, the will Thanksgiving come up eventually. Probably, yeah, we, we should yeah, talk about that some, some point. Some, yes, sometime. It will, we will know one day in history. All you need today is stay with Plus TV Africa. We'll give you things like he, that. He was the, I would also mention, he was the 30th U.S. president. Um, and uh, I think we're out currently in 45, yeah, the 45th um, U.S. president. So, yeah, and then this is in 19, 1923. Mm -hmm. <sighs> All right. All right. Um, also today in history, now we're moving to maybe a little sad story. Mm -hmm. This is now talking about the Nigerian Civil War. It was on this day in 1969 that Nigerian troops captured Umwahia. Um, it was uh, just about 15 days before uh, the Biafran surrender. It was, you know, still in Nigeria's history, one of the most painful um, eras of our history from 1967 to 1970. Uh, the war basically was at a, you know, sort of a stalemate before this part, you know, because troops had tried to capture many towns. The Biafran uh, soldiers had fought back a lot of times. You know, they, they really were trying to get um, a hold of Oweri at that time. Um, but or it was one of the most difficult places for them to capture. But uh, I think um, it was Olushagon Basenjo and his uh, battalion of troops, about 10,000 of them, that did the work at that time and eventually invaded 
Oweri in September 1968. I think this was just 15 days to the end of yes. the war, Biafran. Uh, yes. uh, so Oweri was in 1968, it was eventually captured in 1969, and then December 24th, Umahia was then captured uh, in Abia State. 15 days after Umahia was captured, the Biafran soldiers surrendered. So. It, it, it breaks my heart to read about war, uh, and, and I chose to avoid it and just try why we are commemorating that this is what happened on this day. I'd like to uh, pick something from a piece that was written by uh, Professor Patu Tomi. Um, he, uh, sometime in January, uh, he wrote a piece in the Vanguard newspaper that I'd like to just highlight um, a few uh, some, of, uh, some of it, basically. Yeah. He said, I would like to pay tribute to the human spirit, which allows broken men and women to overcome the anguish of war and construct new lives after. With the Nigerian Civil War, there were saints and sinners, and there were heroes and traitors. We still have that today. Um, uh, let me also highlight some other things. That piece was very engaging. It's published in the Vanguard, January uh, 2020. It asks the question, why Nigeria continues to wobble so badly in spite of experience that should be driving it forward and what can be done about it? Now, there is this part that you really might want to pay attention to. He said, merit must matter. He is of the opinion that the Nigerian essence sadly has become about the democratization of mediocrity. Affirmative action that some are educationally backward, he went on to say, has been abused and has devalued the Nigerian way and its institution and made corruption the purpose of public life. The collapse of culture, which has reduced human purpose to primitive accumulation of power and money, often through criminal privatization of the Commonwealth, has hurt Nigeria badly. I'll just uh, re recap this public life must be about service and advancing the common good. That is, he was sharing his experience of the war. Uh, he was still quite young when the whole thing was going on. Um, and basically anybody, it doesn't matter how young you were, experiencing war would never wish it, even in the, on your worst enemy. So Nigeria is at the brink of so many possibilities. We don't want war to be a part of it. So we must continue to work to keep this Nigerian dream, find out exactly how we can be together. We shouldn't shy away from tough conversations. The Nigerian civil war is not something that must be repeated in this country. We must work together to ensure that doesn't happen. And I like, you know, that you said we shouldn't shy away from tough conversations. Um, I like it because I've noticed that the Nigerian Civil War and the Biafran War is something that is, is, is sensitive to you know, too many people to talk about. Some don't want it spoken about. Some need their stories to be told. Some you know, um, you know, are always trying to you know, hush every other person who tries to bring up the, this conversation. But we should get to a place as a nation where we accept the failures of both sides during, you know, 1967 to 1970, except, you know, the places where people actually committed war crimes, except the places where there should be national apologies, if possible, um, um, you know, towards the, you know, the Southeasterners. There is um, every now and then, you know, Nigeria goes to Rwanda to, you know, take part in their memorial um, and their remembrance of the, the Rwandan uh, genocide. Uh, but... It did happen in Nigeria. One to three million people lost their yeah, lives. There's been conversations, to be, honest, to be fair, to be fair, they, they continued. I think this was written in commemoration of the 50th um, um, Biafran War. It's now called the Biafran War because we know that there were a lot of people uh, that died from starvation. Yes. Uh, one to three million, according to figures. And there, uh, there is a track on um, a jingle on Plus TV Africa that has um, her speaking that she is angry with our leaders and that anger needs to be translated to action to rebuild this country let not the dead be in vain those that have bled for this country pe people like um uh, that were assassinated as well that could have helped build this country we talked about that yesterday Bolaige, let their deaths not be in vain and and the 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 mentality, the emotions towards the Southeasterners also needs to be worked on. I'm, I'm from Edo State, you know, so I'm not, you know, I'm not from the East, but I've lived there for, I lived there for about 10 years or even more. 
Um, and I still see Nigeria today still almost having the same emotions and mentality towards the Southeasterners. They still use, you know, the Southeast and the Igbo people as pawns during uh, social media um, battles. You know, there's still some very, very negative uh, tweets. But it depends on, it, it depends on where you're looking at it from. Some would say that, um, uh, yes, um, there are issues to be resolved, but... We don't help matters with the way we conduct ourselves. No, Let's don't. talk about IPOB, for instance. It is, it's been banned as a that terrorist group. Um, let's talk about some of the agitation. Um, Igbos killing themselves over uh, fight for supremacy. Um, who leads? Namdi Kanu is not in this country. He's someone, somewhere else, but he's still pressing buttons. So when we prioritize the nationhood of a particular people beyond personal interest and work in that direction, knowing that if you kill somebody, whether the person is Igbo or Hausa, so long as that person is Nigerian, yes. you are killing uh, what makes us? I agree. We, we, there's, there's unfortunately not, you know, the time to to keep talking. You know, this go is all one conversation this, but... that is unending, but uh, we have to pause now. Today in history, two things happen. One on the Cherrier side, uh, the president uh, of the United States at the time, Calvin College, um, put on the light for the outdoor Christmas tree at the White House, and also on this day. Uh, the invasion of Umwaha during the Biafran uh, um, War uh, on this day. It, I think it was a period of uh, three days, but... Hello. You. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.